Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about the topic called encapsulation. It's a form of object-oriented programming. And basically object-oriented programming, what it encompasses is encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance. And today we're going to go over mainly encapsulation. Uh, well, one might ask themselves, what is encapsulation? And really all it really is, is it's a process of hiding data from outside sources. Um, it basically makes it so that different classes, which we'll be taking a look at, the different classes of uh, inside a program only have uh, access to public information. So you're basically hiding data and there's no direct access. So an example of this in, uh, in real life would be when you go to the bank. I mean, you know you have money in your account, but you don't directly interact with that money. You interact with the bank, which then gives you the money. Why do we use encapsulation? Uh, I, I, mean, I mean, we can just all share all the data. I mean, people use encapsulation because it helps improve security and reliability. It helps make sure that only specific things that need specific data have it. Otherwise, people could find loopholes in our program and whatnot. Uh, think of encapsulation like sending a letter in the mail, right? You, you come up you into the mailbox, you put your mail in, but you don't really care about the whole transportation uh, aspect of it, right? Uh, I mean, you have no idea how it gets there or, or, or how it's being taken care of. All you know is you got sent in, and in a few days it'll arrive. Something very similar could be done programming-wise. Uh, as you can see here on my screen, I've just created a regular form program. Um, and I'm going to be showing. I'm going to be going with, with through with you guys on the class structure and showing you how it works. All right, let's get started. So in order to create a class, you first you right click on your on your uh, dem on your uh, solution and you add a class. Uh, I'll call this one here demo, but you can really call it whatever you want, whatever significance it has. So there's an object or whatever. Uh, at the top here, you have all the different libraries that are being used in the class. And here you have, this is the main stuff that you're working with right over here. So inside this class demo, uh, we're going to be setting up different attributes, things that the class has. So whether that be like uh, a height, a width, you know, if we're, working, if, we're looking at a, if we're looking at a parking lot, for example, the, the number of vehicles or or like the, the max number of vehicles. And I mean, in this tutorial, I'll be looking at the parking lot specifically. So let's go ahead with that. I actually should be renaming this. I'll recall it as parking lot. So we'll do our entire tutorial here as a parking lot. All right. Okay. So attributes. Generally, attributes are any property, anything that that, uh, that a class has that uh, that data needs to store. So, in this case, it would be second vehicles in the lot. Um, as you can see here, this is basically just a small little attribute representing the number of vehicles that can be in the lot in the parking lot, right? Because you can only have a specific number of vehicles, maximum, and a specific number that are currently in there. You can see right here in the front, I have this keyword here, private. What that basically means is no one except for the variables within this class, or the subprograms within this class, the methods, the procedures, the functions, have access to the number of vehicles in the lot. That means other classes like the program.cs or the actual form, they don't have access to this, to this data. Um, other, other, uh, in, it's called an extra modifier, right? Other extra modifiers include public, and there's many other. There's many, actually there's many of them, but in this in this tutorial, I'll be going over these two here. All right, so I'll actually I'll, I'll, I won't be using public because it's not good style. It's not good style to use public because then other classes have access to that uh, attributes, and you want to make sure that. Only specific things have uh, access to the attribute. So we're going to go ahead and write private. And so we represent the max number of vehicles available inside the class. All right. So now that we have our attributes, our next step is the constructor. Constructor, sorry. Uh, every class requires this constructor, and it's something that helps set up all the attributes. 
It's very sim similar to a subprogram, except we don't need to state what the return type is. And the subprogram's name is the same as the class name. All right. So in this case, the constructor would be public uh, parking lot. Okay. And this is basically the constructor in here, any data, any parameters that we need to pass. So in this case, uh, I don't need to pass any specific parameters. I'm going to preset them. So the number of vehicles on the lot is equal to zero. That's the current amount that there are. And the max number of vehicles equals 100. So we know that the total number of vehicles we can have in this parking lot, it's a huge parking lot, the total number of vehicles we can have in this parking lot are 100, and we currently have in there zero. As you can see here, use public, because any class out there can go ahead and make their own parking lot. Let's set it up. Uh, so like when we go ahead and we write a, like, uh, when, we, when we create an array, so we like say int, I don't know, array is equal to new int, this new int here is basically the same thing as over here. So we go ahead and create parking lot. So parking lot parking is equal to new parking lot. This new parking lot here would call this constructor. Okay, moving on. So constructor, as I already said, I previously mentioned, it's required for every class. And the interesting about it, the interesting thing about it is that you can have more than one constructor per class. This allows you to have like different per se setups of the class. So we're gonna have another one, public parking lot. And this is actually something called overloading. You can we'll be learning about it later on in a different topic. Uh, and it is, you can set it up with different parameters. So in this case, uh, we can set it up, uh, one second, we can set it up with parameters such as um, a new number of vehicles and a lot. Oh my goodness, sorry, one second. Number of vehicles and a lot. And you can set it up as a specific amount of max vehicles. Now when we go ahead, you can see these all have the same name. So in order to specify which one I'm talking about, and I'm not talking about the parameters, if I just go number of vehicles in lot, sorry, one second, that's a that different name here. If I go, if I say, go ahead and say number of vehicles in each lot, you can see here is the actual one, and here this one is the parameter. So in order to make sure that the program is aware, we've had the keyword this. This dot number of vehicles in the and the lot is equal to number of vehicles in the lot. Same thing goes for the max vehicles. Sorry. Max vehicles. This basically specifies the parameters are given. So when I go ahead and I, when I go ahead and I create the parking lot, parking lot, I have the option of both creating it without any variables, which will automatically set the number of vehicles in the lot to zero and the maximum number of vehicles to 100, or I can specify specific amount of vehicles that are currently in the lot and the maximum number of vehicles available to be inserted inside the lot. Okay. The next step that we have here is behaviors. Behaviors is all, is all your, so this by the way here, this was the constructor. Constructors. And then we have here, so again, what's the problem? We have one warning. Oh, that's fine. All right. And then we have something called behaviors. So behaviors is basically all of our, uh, it is basically like all the attribute code of the class, since now we've finished it. A class does nothing, right? Other than hold and retrieve that data in the constructor. Uh, behaviors are basically our, it's our actions that the class is capable of. So our subprograms, our pro procedures, our functions, all that stuff. So when we create this parking lot, we need to be able to add a vehicle, remove a vehicle, and check the lot's full. And so these are different behaviors that can that can be done inside the parking lot. So, So now we can uh, now we can add in these behaviors. We'll do that real quick right here. 
So public void, which means that there's no return type, and the public means that it's accessible by all class other classes, right? So add a, add a vehicle. Let's go ahead and create that. So in order to add a vehicle, we just need to increment the number of vehicles in the parking lot, right? Simple as that. And then move a vehicle right now since we're not specifying specific vehicles or anything right uh we just de decrement the number of vehicles right delete sorry one second remove uh, vehicle. in this case we just need to decrement the number of vehicles that's all there is to it um all right now now that we have that done now that we have, now we have the parking lot class finished let's go ahead and make the next class let's add a let's add a vehicle class in here this vehicle class will hold all the different vehicles that are available to be used mm. all right so once again we're back the same thing we need our attributes we need the constructor and then we need our behaviors all right so for our attributes what does the vehicle have well it has a make second so private it has uh, model it has a uh, type it has a weight and it has a color Perfect. All right. These are different attributes that the vehicle has. Now we need to go ahead and make the constructor. Uh, basically, for the constructor, we can create one that uh, one regular one, which is which is just that has no parameters and sets the attributes to some specific one. We'll create it on the spot here. So public. Oh, they call it vehicles. Sorry, should be called vehicle. You can't. Yeah, it needs to be singular. Oops, sorry about that one. So this one passes in no parameters. And so we gotta preset all these. So make let's go with Honda uh, model. Let's go with Civic. The civic uh, type it's a car um, what else do we have here weight let's say 1000 kilograms fair uh, and then the color hmm, black like regular All right, so there we go, we've set up our constructor. And then we can also have a separate constructor, which holds all the proper, all the parameters that are passed in by the, by, that are passed in when, when we're creating this vehicle class. We're doing an instance of the vehicle, sorry. So we would need a string make, a string model, a string type, and double weight and a color. I don't know what's up with these things, all the error mistakes in the typing. Maybe it's the timing. It's midnight here. All right. Now that we created, oh, and pass it in. Sorry. So this dot, this dot make is equal to make this dot model equal to model this dot type 
is equal to type this dot weight is equal to weight and then this dot color is equal to color okay perfect um now there's something new that I still have not gone covered. It's called an accessor modifier. Accessors and modifiers. Basically, what this means is since all of these attributes here are private, none of the other classes are able to access them. So when they need that data from them, they have subprograms called accessor modifiers, which which gives out this information without being able, without without the other classes having direct access to it. So in this case, another class might need the specific make of the, of the car. So uh, public a public string um, get make return make. And we can do this all the way across the board for all of them. So, oh, sorry, I don't know what just happened. Here. Let me make it for all of them. So, right now, I'll only make it really for the make and the model. But you but you should go ahead and make for all of them. So, set, make, and then set, model. So, accessors are gets. And modifiers are, are sets. So in this case, the uh, set make will return a void. Doesn't need to return anything. And then it will make is equal to. This dot make is equal to specified make. This dot model is even specified model. All right, that's fine. All right. Now that we have all the access modifiers so that other classes can now get and set information indirectly, um, there's still something missing, uh, and it means uh, store and like storing the vehicles uh, themselves as, as they're apart, right? In order to do this, we need to use something that we learned in the class before, it's called a list. And basically, a list is just a collection of different objects. Um, which can be added and removed. It's basically it's basically a, a glorified array in which you can add or remove uh, objects to no end. Well, there is an end, right, to, to a list, but it's just constantly being changed and adapted as time goes. So you can have a, basically a list of strings or you can actually have a list of vehicle classes. Um, in order to do that, we can go over the parking class and here we can go ahead and make a list of vehicles and new list. And now we have a list that we can actually add and remove vehicles. So actually in the add vehicle, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll vehicles.add and we'll add a new vehicle in here. And this time we'll give it the preset type of vehicle, right? We don't we don't know the make and model. Um, and then we can here we can remove vehicles. So vehicles dot remove move at, and then I'll just get I'll just set it to remove the, the last vehicle added. So vehicles dot count minus one. Okay. All right. In here, you can really specify make, model, color, weight, and type in here, and then set it over in here, right? Because you have two options either setting up by yourself or what was given, right? I'll just leave it as this, but when you go ahead and code this, you're more than welcome to. So 
Uh, now, all classes really are complete, right? Uh, the only thing we don't have here are accessors and modifiers. So let's go ahead and quickly add that in. Okay, so what would other classes need potentially? In this case, other classes might need the number of number of vehicles. Number of vehicles. So this would return, oh, sorry, I made it a void integer. Uh, this should return the number of vehicles in the lot. Now, I don't want to be able to change that number of vehicles because only when new vehicles are added should it be changed. So I'm not going to add in a modifier. It only really needs an accessor. Um, public int get max vehicles. Uh, and this here will return the max vehicles. And then I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to create a modifier for the max vehicles. And this is because in reality the the parking lot might go might get an upgrade and might have more spots available or whatnot. So I want to have that option available to me. So then we can have um, so now we can set max vehicles equals to max number. And there are there are accessories and modifiers. So I just didn't add here. The time. That's it. Those are our modifiers. So, uh, so our behavior pro, uh, or we added in our behaviors, right? Or add and remove. And that's it. So now all the classes really are complete. And now only the only thing we still have to do is build the user interface. And you can really do that on your own. It's not. It's not difficult at all. Um. Let's go. But I, I can maybe be able to help you really quickly here. I'll do it really quickly with you guys. Okay. All right. So inside the actual form, and I'm actually just going to rename this quickly. All right. There we go. Okay. Uh, so inside this form, this form, uh, we can go ahead and create a parking lot. So parking lot, parking equals new parking lot. And let's set it up so that the current number of vehicles is zero, and we can have the twenty vehicles inside. And that's what all there is. We just created, uh, we just created a. Um, in an instance of the class. One thing that we did forget is instead of the parking lot one type of extra modifier is their uh, public bull uh, check room. So basically just to see if there's any room left in the parking lot. So basically check um, if the number of vehicles in the lot is less than the max number of vehicles. In this case we can return True, which means there's room. Otherwise, we can just return a false. That's about it. We just forgot that. Okay, so now you you can go ahead and use that parking lot, add buttons to add or move vehicles, text boxes, all that stuff inside and that really really is the functionality of the class and the encapsulation to make sure that everything's in its place and that uh, all the data is is is, is making sure it's, it's properly has a proper visibility and really a programmer aims for as, as greatest greater of amount greatest of amount of invisibility they can possibly achieve the great the more the better the greater the better all right, that's pretty much about it. I hope you learned something new or something you didn't know yet. Uh, and yeah, good luck. Try now making, if you have some spare time, try being able to remove a car 
add text boxes to try to um, you know try to add or move make model all that not very difficult try it on your own uh, just to summarize here quick summary um, what we have what we've gone over today we've gone over creating a class so how, how it's done uh, everything in there um, then we have we went over the public and private um, like uh, styles right so then there's your public which is viewable by all classes and your private which is viewable by um, which is viewable by uh, only the class the one class itself and then there are many other ones but those will be going on over the rest of uh, object-oriented programming specifically inheritance and polymorphism all right uh that's pretty much it oh and oh yeah what else we went over we went over uh all the different parts parts of the class uh so whether that be the the attributes the constructor um as well as the uh, behaviors and then we also learned that and then we also went through the accessors and modifiers all right well thank you very much for listening i hope you learned something new today if you have any questions feel free to contact me uh and good luck it's not very difficult content concept to grasp uh it's just realizing that when you're creating a class or creating these separate uh, objects make sure that you have um, as much hidden data as possible. Make sure that there's nothing that shouldn't have access to the to the direct access to this uh, to these properties of these uh, this data that shouldn't have it. So if something doesn't need it, it shouldn't have it. Uh, good out, good out, good luck out there, and uh, happy programming.